Well, hi guys, welcome back. It has been a while, I know. Um, so what I've got going on here today, and I'm going to bring you along with me, is I have to do, basically rearrange the entire floor plan in the shed for a vehicle that the deal is basically done. We just have to get it in a week or ten days or something like that. So, unfortunately, that means the old 62 has got to go out the door and another one come back in. Now! You Corvair guys, don't despair, don't give up on me, because, just trust me, you're going to like what's coming in. Hint, hint. Um, but I have two untitled 62s that, are, that would take a whole lot of work, and I'm not sure yet if I'm even going to keep this. I would actually like to combine this automatic model with the manual model outside, put the two together, make a manual. I actually, I won't say I prefer this body style, but I really, really like it. I know not many guys would claim that, not even many Corvair guys would claim that, but I really like the early body style. But I also really like the later one. So, I've got to button this all back together. I've got a brand new front end that I'm going to have to reattach, put the wheels on, get it out the door. Unfortunately, I, I hate moving it out the door with the brand new front end on it, but I have no choice. I have no room. So, um, I'm going to have to get that done, clean everything off. The 48 and the upholstery setup behind it there is going to have to go out the door. I've got 4.3, like a literally an engine's worth of 4.3 parts from that 90 Chevy. I don't know where I'm going to put those. They've got to go out. I've got to clean up tools and junk and cardboard and there's car parts. You know, trying to do too much in a little shop. You got you guys understand that. So, Let's get busy. As you probably saw, assuming I showed it already, um, I brought a telehandler home, did some tree limb work, did some dirt work on the driveway, fill in a mud hole. Um, I'm going to use that to move this Corvair outside once I get it out the door. Um, I've already started the 48. It's been months since I ran it. Once I got fuel into the carburetor, she took right off, purring like a kitten, like a good old Chevy would. So. Let's get going. You can see the state of my project here. It has just taken forever to get anywhere. But that's irrelevant. Um, Does anybody need Chevy 4-3 parts?
You know, a guy would really have room to work in here if he didn't have to work in here. I'm liking this. Got the 48 out, the tables out, sewing machine to the side. Um, all the Chevy 4.3 parts are out. I have actually tried several times to buy uh, older vehicles, the same year model. Um, I was bidding on three different Astro vans, 1990 Astro vans at the same time. They all went sky high. Obviously, I'm not the only one trying to find a good use 4.3 six cylinder. Um, I'm just not interested in investing that kind of money in that kind of engine. Um, I need to get back to it, you know. The most radical thing I can think of that I would love to do on that little pickup is put a 292 in it. That would be crazy. I would love it. Um, not even sure if it would fit lengthwise. I have a 250. You know, we could put a four barrel intake on it and either a, a four barrel carb or fuel injection, I don't know, a turbo, hey, that'd be fun. Um, all of these things have been done before. I've never seen it in a, that year model of a pickup. But anyway, now that I have all of that out, I am going to put, rehang the headlights on the front of the Corvair so they're not just laying out there like that. Um, then we will shoot the front end up. Okay, well a bit of a mystery here and it's been too many years for me to remember clearly. This is why you always take notes, take pictures, label bags, which I do. So, um, all of these are basically loose. I'm missing at least half of the adjustment screws, uh, but I cannot find them. The only headlight bag the only parts bag for headlights I find is for the bezels themselves that go over this. So I'm of the opinion I took the bezels off and this was all loose. I don't know for sure. But I do know one thing, if I took it off, I would have done this to it. And I do know a second thing, that this was a Johnson County car, so all bets are off. Anyway, I guess what I'll do at this point is just forget it. I'll disconnect the pigtails at the headlights, pull all of that off, throw it in a box, and uh, we'll just leave it like that for now. A guy's got no choice. All right, I've taken the little harnesses for the headlights out just to keep the sun and the weather off of them. No sense of getting those all, you know, corroded or old, weathered, whatever. Um, so I'm going to, I've got to flip the front end around, end for end, because it's sitting in there backwards right now. Um, then three bolts per side, hang it up in the car. And then idler and pitman arm, I might just loosely install those. Um, I shouldn't even need steering, so I don't know if I'll bother. But if I do sell it, the next guy may want to be able to steer it. Now the tires I know are shot. So if they hold air long enough to get it out the door, it'll be a miracle. Um, certainly not going to spend money on these hard to find tires. Uh, but let's dive under there and get this back up.
Okay, so here's what we're looking like. I have the steering just kind of hung up there for now. Might put a wrench on and tighten them down just a little bit more, but no big deal. Whatever. Of course, the front end is secure. Hung back up in there. Now, now the, the difficult part moving this into the shed when I did was my hubs were completely seized on the front. Um, of course, that's not the case anymore. We've been through all that. And take a quick look under here what we can see. Overall, very solid car. There's one little spot right there. And there's one little spot probably right, right about directly under the driver's seat. Right in there, about as big as my hand. Um, and that's it other than the shelf for the battery in the engine compartment, which is a very common problem. When these got parked and the batteries were left in them, that just happened. So, um, I guess I will grab the tires, put them on, try to air them up. They will probably go down immediately. I don't remember what went flat, and then we'll try to drag this out of here. Oh, how am I going to drag this out of here? Well, we'll figure it out. Alright, well all the tires take air, but they don't hold it, especially left rear there. All the others, I think at least, kind of hold the weight. Um, so that's fine. It can ride on the rim. I'm just going to pull it out of here, and then, like I said, I brought the telehandler to move it, and then we'll set it up on blocks out by the other one, and have a matching set, and it'll be, it'll be neat. Um, don't have my pickup here because I brought the telehandler home. So I've got the old little John Deere 750 out, uh, and my nice toe strap is in my pickup. So this is my... I'll tell you a little story. All the years that I knew my grandpa before he passed away, um, he owned a... let's see... A 79, I believe, Chevette, Chevrolet Chevette, and that was his shop car. He had a little trailer hitch on it, and this is what he used running his automotive business. That's the chain he used to pull home every single stalled vehicle that came his way. From compact cars to school buses, that chain there pulled them all into the shop. And I got in on helping him. How that little transmission and clutch ever survived in that Chevette, I'll never know. Um, but I don't remember him ever having to put a new clutch in. Then I bought it from him. I used it for a shop vehicle for a couple years. Um, and then it just sat around. I sold it. Unfortunately, I never should have done that. Why do we do these things, guys? And then the next day, the guy that bought it came back 
with the steering wheel in his hand, said, I thought you might like to have this. The rest of the car burnt down. I don't know what he was doing with that car. <sighs> I don't know what I would do with a four-door 79 Chevette, but I never should have let it go. That would have been a great school car, come to think of it, for my son. But, <sighs> all water over the dam. So, I am going to bolt that on to that thing there and pull it out and then we'll forklift it. But by my clock and my stomach, it is bean time, having eaten at 6.30 this morning, uh, my breakfast like usual. So I'm going to go take care of that, grab a child to drive the tractor, and we'll get this thing out of here. Well, she's gone. From here on out, it's just cleaning up the perimeter, catch-all, throw junk anywhere I can fit it kind of thing going on here. Some of these things I can take, a work, take to work. The uh, bleh, 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 radiator and the shroud and the condenser are all for my 86 GMC. I'll take those to work on Monday. Um, I wonder if these stands that the Corvair were on were actually from work and they've been here for years. Oh boy. Um, good thing I'm related to the owner, huh? And what else? This thing, do you know what this is? I built this years ago, never finished it naturally. Can you tell by the, the mounts there that go on here? They go across. They don't even fit. Boy, I made those tight. They have to stomp on it to get it to go down. Yeah, I started making a test stand for stove bolts. Those are actually Mark 216. Looks like you'd probably have to have the bell housing on the back of the engine to use the rear mount there. It's the radiator out of the 63C10 out back. And if I remember right, I had yeah, have an ignition switch and the gauges and a choke 
cable on there so I would really like to finish that project too and get um, this engines from Wisconsin that's from Kevin and I would like to get that on something like this just for fun and maybe doll it up a little anyway I'm gonna start cleaning out you don't necessarily need to see all this um, and then this is where the 48 Chevy's going this wall another project I have wanted to do for years is revisit this wall tear it out this was a slap down knockout kind of thing that had to go in quick it's had several sizes of doors in it. It's had an old uh, wood frame window in it. It's had a, it still has obviously, an exhaust fan in it. Termites have absolutely devastated the entire thing. I think the tin on the outside and this little bit on the inside are the only thing holding it together. Uh, yeah. So I want to leave enough room and movable vehicles in here that hopefully when lumber goes back down enough to where I'm comfortable buying it because I'm so cheap um, that I can get treated lumber uh, maybe a uh, walkthrough door because I would love one on this side of the shed do away with all this and uh, tin it inside and out again of course and away we go so that's another story for another day right now I'm gonna get to cleaning so this spring I was doing some tin and some trim work up here and I still need to put cut a piece of wood and make a kind of a decorative corner in there but uh, for months now I have wondered where is my est wing or east wing I don't know how you pronounce it hammer my good one and I've even been at Lowe's or hardware store or whatever and have deliberated, man, I should just really pick another one up because I cannot find it. This is um, the original 283 out of my, was my grandpa's 65 convertible uh, Impala, now my dad's. And so we're hanging on to that. I should probably rebuild it. But I was cleaning up and saw that down there. So evidently, I dropped it and uh, just grabbed another hammer in the meantime and that is where it's been. Sorry little fella, but welcome back. And by the way, I don't know how it's been where you live, let me know in the comments. I think most of you have been in the same, con same place as far as the weather goes. It has been incredibly, incredibly hot here in Kansas. It came on early and it has not let up for two months, maybe over two months. It is just incredible. And bugs. I have noticed more insect activity this year than any other. Right now, here in the last couple weeks, I've got crickets all over the place, which they normally don't show up till uh, in another month or two at least now they haven't been chirping so I really don't know what they're doing but um, for those of you who don't believe God moves with signs and wonders and uh, gives us warnings well you just ask Pharaoh how that went for him Well, there we go. And now I recognize it's far from ideal, but it's a lot better than we than it was. And when we pull the 48 Chevy in, we will have a car we can pull back out and easily get to anything when I say, okay, it's time to do the wall. Um, everything pretty much but the gas pump is on wheels, so everything can be cleared out in just a few minutes. Um, we won't have a car that's stuck right in that spot, and that's, that's the good thing. Um, still unfortunate that I need to move it out, but I've got no, uh, there's no choice here. I've got, I've got nothing. So, so I'm going to finish cleaning a few things on that end behind the camera and pull the 48 back in, then we'll set up the tables. 
the sewing machine over here, um, and then our new project thing will uh, be able to come in that end, and hopefully, well, we'll just wait on that. And just in case you're wondering, maybe you can't tell on the camera, but you, I don't know if you see a nice red hue here on the floor. Of course, on that exhaust fan, you can really tell it's red. I painted two vehicles. I finished up the restoration of the 54 Chevy pickup uh, in here. Mainly did the bed in this building. Everything having been done already before I moved out from my full-time restoration shop. Um, that was candy apple red. And then not too long after that went away, I, um, a friend of mine, actually our insurance agent, uh, had a Ford Fairlane that he wanted repainted, a real quick paint job. And so I sprayed that down with, I believe, candy apple red as well. Um, I believe is what he wanted on there. So there is plenty of reason for this floor to be red, and that is why. Okay, well there we go. Um, got everything back I need for continuing on the upholstery for the 48. My brake light stayed on because my brake pedal stayed about halfway down. You know, it's just not good for these old cars to sit dormant for long periods of time. But I'll crawl under there and I'll squirt some, squirt some oil on the hinge point and uh, That'll be that. I'll put battery maintainer back on it, disconnect the negative cable. Um, and that, that'll be that for now. And I can still easily get to it, work on it, and the great thing is if I need to get to something back there, then I can do it. I got a lot more room it seems like. I don't know. Anyway, by the way, that is an old hotel sign. Um, I have it backwards, obviously, but maybe one day I'll show you what that's all about. Not that it's too exciting. So, anything else I want to share with you guys? Obviously, I've got space here, um, and we will be, be bringing that project in. I've talked enough about that. Uh, got a different pulley for my sewing machine. That just showed up yesterday, and... I just kind of stuck it on the end of the shaft here. I haven't even done anything with it. But hopefully that's going to slow me down. Now that I'm almost done with the entire thing. No, I've got the entire front seat, the cushion and the backrest to do yet. But um, hopefully that'll slow it down to a much more comfortable speed. Um, this video will be coming soon, I hope. Um, what do you think? guess I'll give you a little sneak preview on the base there. Matches the door panels. Um, anything else I ought to show you? I decided to put the sewing machine on this side because I have those things over there. And I just felt it might get a little cramped and crowded. Hopefully I'm done with this before real cold weather sets in because I'll be, 
I'll be toasting the old buns if I uh, remain there. So I think for the rest of the day, I am going to continue the cleaning project all the way around here. Anyone need a sunshade? My sheep refuse to lay under that thing. So guys, I have been just extremely frustrated on getting any videos out and getting things done. It's just been so beastly hot. I believe the high was 104 for today. So it's a good 90 plus in the shop right now. Um, so I'll probably go cool off a little bit and then drive the telehandler back to work. Um, so, you know, um, basically what I'm saying is after working in it all day, I get home and I'm just not too excited about coming out to the shop and working in the same heat for another couple of hours. So I have here and there and a video is coming soon with this. But I was hoping to get the entire front seat assembly into one video since you've already seen so much of all the processes I do to do that. Um, so, you know, that's kind of one of the reasons I decided to make this video. If you like just an ordinary guy just doing ordinary things and bringing you along, well here you go. Let me know if you enjoyed it. Um, if you want to come along with me on these again, <sighs> um, I'm doing a couple of other things for videos, but they're just taking time having to order parts or buy things, you know, and I don't always have the spare money to do that. So anyway, thank you so much for coming along on this one. God bless you guys. See you on the next one. We suggest that you like and subscribe now.